back just to warm up here on TV3, uh, back from that short break and straight. Let's head into the issues now. And we're starting from Asamoajan, basically, because uh, Asamoajan, general captain of the Black Stars now. But let's just check out how important Asamoajan is for Ghana at tournaments. <laughs> Yes, man, you know. Jan is the ultimate international football man, the ultimate tournament man too, and if he gets a place in the final squad, there would not be many arguing against that. It would be his 11th straight tournament for Ghana, spread over a 15-year period. Nine of the 10 he has played in have been with the Black Stars, and he has scored in each one of them. His first tournament's goal was hugely significant too. Wonderful goal, the first goal for Ghana in the tournament and the first ever in World Cup play. He didn't score again in that competition, but it sets the tone for five other World Cup goals, including three in South Africa as Ghana reached the quarterfinals. But he is also hugely remembered for this. Asamwa Jian has the opportunity to send Ghana into the semi-finals of the World Cup. And he hits the bar! In the Nations Cup, he has been a standard bearer for Ghana. His six appearances since 2008 is a record for a Ghanaian player. If he travels to Egypt, he will move joint second on most tournament appearances in Africa. He has scored in every one of the tournaments too, but his most prolific competition came nine years ago in Angola when his three goals knocked Angola in the quarterfinals and beat Nigeria in the semifinals for a place in the final. Apart from that, he has been limited to one goal every Nations Cup he has played and a fair dose of near misses and intense criticism has dogged his international career. He opened the scoring at Ghana 2008 and then threatened to go home after criticism of poor finishing intensified. In 2012, he missed the penalty in the semi-final defeat against Zambia and then took time off international football. And in 2015, he watched on as Ghana blew a 2-0 penalty lead against Ivory Coast to miss out on the first Nations Cup title since 1982. You have to wonder now which Jan would show up in Egypt. Also, that's Asamoah in a nutshell, the, the man at tournaments and how crucial he is for Ghana. But uh, yesterday I spoke to one of his closest allies. Uh, he's the CEO of the Baby Jets promotions there, Sami Edimado. And he was telling me, uh, yeah, you know, the issues that we've all been discussing about Asamoah and the armband and, you know, whatever it is. So let's just take this interview from Edimado. When we come back, I'll introduce my guest in the studio and we'll begin the discussion. I told you something. And I'll give you this. I, I think... That, there's one thing that most of you, your guys sometimes, at least you guys should sometimes also go back and research a little. It's a little advice. Uh, please don't, don't come and beat me and don't deal with me. And you remember Ghana uh, against, uh, forgotten the country, in Kumasi, Sule Muntali returned to the Blasters. You remember that? Jan gave the captain's armband to Sule Muntali. Nobody believed it. Two of us. This is Asamojan. This is the one we are talking about. He doesn't care about who will wear the armband. He's proving it. It is not about me doing PR. Something that he did. Many of you were even questioning. Some of you called me personally. Why is Jan giving the scouting bands out to somebody? Why? Why? And I said, this is somebody. He says, he loves to let everybody feel special, everybody feels important. And you remember, his, there was a time he said that the, bla, the, 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 the younger players and the new players, when they come, he wants everyone to have the same and equal treatment as a player. He doesn't want a single player to say that he's a local, he's a young, but no. And that is why he always loved showing that love that everybody should feel special, everybody should feel important. And that's how come he said he needs. He wanted to let Sule feel special because Sule was the senior, and Sule must feel it. Sule must have that joy. That it's not about each and wearing the band, but anybody can wear the band. Whoever wears, wears the band is 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 something that we are all going to work in unity. The person alone doesn't play. 
Well, that's Samir Nimado, the CEO of Baby Jet Promotions. The man says Asamojan does not really care about the armband. And I mean, it's for you to decide, really, if Asamojan does not care about their captain's armband and who is captain for the Black Stars. Let's, let me have your, um, your reactions to this issue uh, on my Twitter feed at the Aofusu. Or you can send your messages to at 3SportsGH, and then I'll read your messages out to the world. If you're listening to us on radio, we are live on 3FM 92.7. Jerome Motri is a man who has been vociferous about this issue the whole week uh, on social media and also with, with his take on his personal blog as well. we'll be, where he's in the studio this morning. We'll be talking to him and about his general take on this issue. And then later on on the show as well, we'll have Sadiq Adams who will also join us and then we'll, we'll, we'll get into this matter you know, a, a, a lot better. We'll also check out the Black Stars squad uh, that has been given out and also Andre Ayu is captain of the Black Stars. We'll also be looking at his numbers for the Black Stars. Some really good numbers for a midfielder. 77 games and 14 goals for uh, for Ghana and he has scored eight of those 14 goals at the African Cup of Nations. He's joint scorer uh, with Asamoah at the African Cup of Nations for uh, joint top scorer, I beg your pardon, at the African Cup of Nations for Ghana. So he himself and Jan, you know, have you know a lot of competition going in there between themselves. Jerome, you're welcome to the show this morning. Thank you. <laughs> Jerome, now I, I mean, I, the, your, your most prominent tweet this morning, um, this week was the tweet about you calling uh, Kwesi Apia and that, that discussion. Now, first of all, what is your take on, on all of this? And having those personal discussions with Kwesi Apia, what, what is his mood like? Well, I think certain things have to be made clear, which is that, I mean, the first of which is that Asamoah has every right to feel bad about anything that happens in his life. Yeah. I mean, we shouldn't take that right from him. It is his life, it is his career. He decides what should happen to him. Yeah. I mean, particularly when he has the power to make that decision. The same way those in charge of the team also have the right to decide what they think is it's, it's good for the team. Yeah. I don't have any problem if Asamoah had any problem with what Kwesi did. Exactly. And I think that it, it is with, within his right to feel bad. Yeah. The problem I had with Asamojan, however, had to do with he saying that if he's not going to be captain of the team going into the AFCON, then he has quit the national team. I don't think that was good on his part. Yeah. And I have said that in as much as we want to respect his view, mm -hmm. we have to make it clear to him that mm -hmm. this is the national team we're talking about. Mm -hmm. This is the national team you have captained over five or six years. Mm. This is the national team that you have done so much for. Yeah. In fact, he is he's currently the, top, uh, the nation's all-time top scorer. Yes. And my position is this. If you were not happy with what the coach did, mm. there could have been more better ways of addressing the issue yeah. than telling the whole nation that mm -hmm. because of a captaincy issue, I won't go to the yeah. AFCON. Yeah. I am done with the national team. Yeah. And I have said that, but for he... I mean, but for the president coming in mm -hmm. to intervene yeah. and he also deciding that, okay, now I, I'm backtracking on what I said, mm -hmm. that decision to quit at that time would have been a scar on anything he has done for the country. And people would have remembered him for that. Yeah. There's another issue with whether or not the president had to come in. Yeah. I, I think he shouldn't have gotten to that point. Exactly. But if, if that is what has brought peace, then we have to accept it and move on. On the side of Chris Apia, mm -hmm. I, I don't have to like the decision he took. Exactly. I respect him as coach of the national team, mm -hmm. and I respect his decision as, as I mean, any decision that he, he thinks will be in the interest of the team. Yeah. What we must understand, and I'm sure Chris Apia knows this, yeah. is that any decision he takes has a capacity to uh, uh, help or go against the team yeah. regarding the AFCON. Yeah. And if the expectations of Ghanaians are not met mm -hmm. at the AFCON. Yeah. He knows what will happen. Exactly. It's, it's, it's either people are going to criticize or lambast him, mm -hmm. or in the end he'll be fired. And mm -hmm. that is why I think that a lot of the noise, in my view, were, were just unnecessary. Because, mm -hmm. you see, sometimes we say that Chris Apia is not able to take decisions, mm -hmm. decisions that people think he should be taking. Yeah. I mean, this captaincy issue, for all that has happened this mm -hmm. week, yeah. Now we know that a lot of the things that we were told in the past were not true. Yeah. Even recently, we were told that the, the, the issue between Jan and the day regarding the captaincy issue was resolved. Mm -hmm. 
Now, if you check Dan's reaction, yeah. everything shows that there was there was a problem. Yeah. So, so you know, yesterday I, I posed this question to Sami Enimado about, you know, is it because that is, is it because it was Andre that Jan had to behave like that, or would Jan have been okay if the captain's armband had gone to anybody else in the team? I anybody else, but but did they? I think that he he still would have had a problem if I'd, if if it had gone to anyone else. Because, you see, if you check the tone of what, what was written on his behalf mm -hmm. as, as, as his resignation letter, mm -hmm. you could tell that it wasn't so much about who is taking it from him. Yeah. It was about the decision to take it from him. Yeah. So where it was going was not, in my view, his worry. Yeah. But the whole idea of taking the captaincy from him at this time of, 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 of his career, Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that, regardless of how Pia did it, mm -hmm. there should have been a better way of dealing with it, like the way it was handled. Yeah. I mean, now it's passed, so we can overlook and say, okay, let's move on from where, where we are now. Mm -hmm. But you check the tone of, of, of his letter, you check the tone of the, the, the reaction by some of his aides, mm -hmm. and you clearly see that they had a big problem with the decision. Yeah. But I'm saying that we should respect the decision of the coach at any time. Exactly. I mean, it's the same coach who made us a manager captain. captain yeah. So, I mean, if then it wasn't wrong, what mm -hmm. makes it wrong now that he feels that somebody else should 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 take it? I think that we should get to the point where we would we would not react. I mean, so strongly emotionally mm -hmm. about certain things because you see, when emotions come into matters like this mm -hmm. it clouds our judgment yeah. we are not able to see whether or not this decision is even helpful yeah. i mean i've heard people say that the coach took the decision based on some prophecy and all those things yeah. and if it was things that i mean just came from members of the public yeah. i mean you can dismiss it because people have their views anyway mm -hmm. but these were things that were being said by people close to samajan and giving the impression that that is what their player or Jan told them. Yeah. And you see, it is not good. Mm -hmm. Not good because now all those things have been said. Mm -hmm. Jan has rescinded his decision after yeah. the intervention of the president. Yeah. Jan is going to go with the team to Abu Dhabi. Mm -hmm. How is the relationship between Jan and the coach going to be exactly. based on all that was said? Yeah. That is why I think that the way most of us reacted to this issue was not the best. Exactly. Next time, if anything like that should happen, or if anything should happen in the team's camp, we should we should keep sober uh, uh, heads mm -hmm. and look at what the issues are. Yeah. If there have been conversations around, and and we are not confident enough mm -hmm. to put those conversations in the public domain, then we shouldn't mention it at all. Exactly. I mean, I have always been against people who get access to privileged information and yeah. when there are issues they want to bring it up. Exactly. I have said that yeah. if you cannot put privileged information publicly and defend it, mm -hmm. don't mention it at all. Exactly. Exactly. Well, you heard that from um, Jerome Autry uh, in the studio this morning uh, talking about the issue of Asamoah It's It's an issue that just won't go away. But we'll take a break. When we come back, Sarik Adams will join us on the set and there will be a lot more discussion. We are back. This is the warm up here on TV3. If you're listening to us on radio, we're live on 3FM 92.7. So, we are talking about uh, Asamojan in detail and also the Black Star squad. Sadiq Adams has just joined us in the studio. Sadiq, you're welcome. Thank you. And, I mean, give us, give us your take on Asamojan, first of all, before we move on to other issues. Um, Jan is a legend. He's, he's the greatest player we've had in the last two decades. And the records and statistics are things that even if you love him, you can never take away from Asamojan. He's, he's, he's the best striker mm -hmm. on paper, mm -hmm. and even in my opinion, uh, regardless of who have passed, but Jan has continually been a very, very substantial part of the Black Stars. Yeah. But with this particular issue and many of, of his uh, scandal reading uh, records, <laughs> he did not act well with the statements. A lot of people do it. Michael Balak was stripped of the captaincy. He mm -hmm. retired from the national team on personal reasons. Yeah. But we all knew why he was retiring. Exactly. So Jan was supposed to, if you wanted to retire, just bless whoever the coach has appointed. Just bless the team and retire on personal grounds, yeah. on personal reasons. Yeah. Leave people to speculate mm -hmm. and leave people to sympathize with you exactly. for all you've done. But if you come out to explain the most important lines in your statement <laughs> says you are quitting because to you, 
you are bigger than everyone else in the team and the sense of entitlement supersedes you want to be captain mm -hmm. other than that you are not ready to play any other role in the team who does that and this was a pr disaster in mm -hmm. my opinion it it will continue to take away a whole lot of things that jan has done for the black stars one it it, it created a very poisonous environment mm -hmm. for himself destroyed the previously good relationship he had with the coach mm -hmm. and in my opinion if i were a coach could see a pair it would have been very difficult for me to patch up with with, with, the, with my behavior and mm -hmm. personal instincts yep. it would have been very difficult for me to patch up with john yep. somebody i have defended in private exactly. and in public, in public yeah. somebody i have taken so much pressure to maintain him as the captain of the team mm -hmm. somebody i created a system to make captain yeah. i created that particular practice exactly. just to make you captain yeah. if john doesn't appreciate everything because has done for mm -hmm. him to bring this statement to undermine the coach yeah. and and get the people around you to say all sort of things just to demean the coach because of one decision i think it's you can talk about the communication and how the the whole issue was communicated to john but that statement was was wayward mm -hmm. and it was very reckless for a captain of a national team to say i will not play so now because mm -hmm. he appears stood by his grounds yes. he showed that he's the boss of the team he's exactly. got the balls yeah. even in the presence of the president of the land mm -hmm. can john say same and stick to his convictions that i cannot play if i don't wear the armband mm -hmm. you are now coming back exactly. it means that you you have backtracked mm -hmm. because even if, though the coach was invited to the jubilee house mm -hmm. he never ever decided to to i mean back down on his decision mm -hmm. it means that he is the boss of yeah. the team yeah. you also wrote an official statement there are some words that you never have to put on official record mm -hmm. that you will never play the team or you are not ready to serve in any other capacity apart from the captain mm -hmm. you are now going to the AFCON. Yeah. you are traveling with the team yeah. in another role something you have already said you were not good no so it, it tells you that John has been very inconsistent with mm -hmm. himself. Yeah. You don't put a statement and say you can never disregard the, the, the red word of the president or so. <laughs> you, you have to stand by your ground. Because <laughs> here could have uh, 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 accepted whatever the president said. Because yeah. I am very sure, and from the conversations, mm -hmm. the coach was questioned as to why he was taking the captains. He gave a very detailed reason to the president mm -hmm. something that the president of the land mm -hmm. has accepted and a, a mere footballer thing that he cannot accept means that john went wayward he must admit but you know he's in a position that's very difficult for him to admit he's surrounded by people who who are never going to admit that they've gone wrong and they've they've put the footballer in a very bad light the best thing for asamoja now mm -hmm. and for kosi mm -hmm. which may be very difficult yeah. is to drop him from the squad or himself <laughs> Sadiq. of course no <laughs> that's a hard one i mean that's, no that's a really hard one then then i would have wanted a Samojan to pull out of the squad you know, and it, wish it, them well you know mm -hmm. it's how do you patch I up don't, i don't think that jan himself mm -hmm. doesn't want to be part of this thing yeah, he, he, wa he wants to be he part. wants to be part and he wants to and so the statement was was to <laughs> was to fo was to influence an environment you know, you know, and you know, yesterday yesterday no. the question i the question i posed to sami Amin was did asamojan want to feel important was, was was that the main reason why he put out that statement did did he want the president's call did he want you know kwasi appear to sort of treat him specially from I, the others I, I, because i really do not understand i have said that it was an emotional reaction it's not something they thought through if they had sat down to think through it well, they would have seen that. Saying that I won't play because I don't have the captain or I'm not I'm not going to be the captain mm -hmm. was wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Now Sadiq says Kwesi must drop him. Look, it would be a very good thing to to cut the team off any possible bitter relationship exactly but given our circumstance mm -hmm. yeah, i don't think sadik himself believes that it, it can some, be done no I, i'm not saying it can be done no but yeah but i think it's I, very difficult it can be done but the difficulty in dropping him mm -hmm. it, it, it even though it will show that yes because mm -hmm. really knows what he wants and what he likes mm -hmm. i'm looking at how the presidency will, will will also feel exactly that's why i think it shouldn't have gotten there yeah. because what? now Jerome, you, 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 you read the statement from the president mm -hmm. that we 
still need your services. Mm -hmm. Who are the we here from the Ghana. presidency? We need your services. Ghana. So the president has already put Kwesi Apia in a very tight corner. That yeah. is why that we need him. That is why it will be difficult for for Kwesi Apia, Apia to drop. Because yeah. I'm just imagining what Nanadu will say if, for instance, so it means that the competence has been undermined. <laughs> of course, yeah, exactly. Yeah, in I mean, some yeah, way, yeah. Yeah. and that is why the other players must learn from it. Yeah. And and I think that see, if I look at the posture of uh, Jan and his aides and all those people, mm -hmm. I feel that they are not helping themselves. I would have wished that. Look, there, I, I keep saying that there's nothing. Sometimes we, we get so bossy with a lot of ego and those things. Mm -hmm. It doesn't help anybody. Yeah. I would have wished that mm -hmm. they would be apologetic to the coach okay. and to the rest of the team. Okay. I mean, the members of the, the team. statement should have been apologetic. Yeah. And, to the and I also team. feel that the general captain thing, whether it's our own creation or not, puts Jan in a very honorary position. Yeah. It's just a where, promotion. Yes. Look, where, you know, you know, it is done. Yeah. It is done. I mean, at Manchester United, when when Ryan Giggs was in the latter part of his career, they made him general captain. Carrick at, at some point. Carrick at some where, point. Too. So it is done. Where you come in, yeah. more or less like a father, you have a father figure. Mm -hmm. Speak to the guys, make them understand that maybe you are bowing out, mm -hmm. but this is something all of us can do to to lift our name, lift our image, help the country, and all that. Mm -hmm. But to take this post, uh, this poster mm -hmm. clearly tells you that it's, it's not something they they talk. I will wish that Kusiapia, being who he is, very gentle in his ways, mm -hmm. would swallow whatever pain or bitterness that has arisen out of yeah. this, and then concentrate on his job. And I'm, I'm sure that whatever happens in Egypt will, will vindicate, I mean, any of the actors. Do you, you know why I say, I'm not saying that Jan should pull out of the squad voluntarily mm -hmm. because he's done something monumentally bad. Yep. But Jan already, as we say, Nidi <laughs> Inyede, this thing came out. The AFCON was going to be blamed. Whatever happens at the AFCON is going to be blamed on Asamoja. Oh. If he, of course, mm -hmm. and you know, mm -hmm. if he goes to the tournament and something happens, there are factions in the team, there mm -hmm. are reports of bickering, and it is essentially going to blame on Asamoja. Exactly. You said you won't play mm -hmm. because you don't, you, you, you can't play without the captaincy. Now you join the team, you go to, they are fighting in the team. Yeah. You are the same I, person causing problems. <laughs> if we don't win it, to save himself <laughs> of all this embarrassment, let's let's just hope, hope that. Nothing will come out of his, I mean, reaction yeah, yeah. In, in, to this whole issue. Yeah. I just hope that, you see, there's always a chance for us as human beings to swallow bitterness. Okay. Uh, yeah, I get it when sometimes we, we make it look like without these things, we cannot live. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It should be possible for Jan mm -hmm. to overlook this issue, yeah. all that has happened. Mm -hmm. It, it should be possible for the coach to also overlook this, mm -hmm. all that has happened. It should mm -hmm. be possible for the new captain, Dede, Dede. to bring everybody together yeah. and drive them to a certain point. Yeah. I know why. Sadly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, realistically, yeah. it's not possible. Exactly. It's not, but, John, regardless of how consummate you are as a professional, once a private conversation you have with one of your most yeah, trusted, understand. you know, leaks, mm -hmm. And once you you are betrayed, mm -hmm. in what I think because he has been betrayed. Yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah, to a certain once level. you are betrayed, mm -hmm. it will be very difficult that because he goes to camp and there is a Samoyan. He wants to discuss something and he goes past a Samoyan because Kwesi may never trust you again. It, it, yeah. That is normal. Yeah. I mean, but yeah. I'm saying that it, it, there's a way you can overlook it. Exactly. I mean, if if I was in Kwesi's position. Mm -hmm. There's no way I will share certain intimate things with you again, exactly. even about the team. Yeah. And that hurts. Yes. Yeah. I mean, Especially for somebody like Samoya, yeah. Yeah. who I, I gets not, emotionally do it. dragged down yeah. by a lot I of I will things. not do it. Yeah. But then, in the interest of the team, for mm -hmm. the purposes of why we are, we are in Egypt, yeah. we have to manage the situation. Yeah. There's, now, there is, there's a saying that uh, we are friends, but we don't <laughs> smile. <Yeah. laughs> Now, now to, um, to to the provisional squad, Sadiq, you you've seen the you seen the squad in, in, in its entirety. What, what what is your take on the on the squad? I mean, the the number of debutants in there, the local players. I mean, what, what's your take on it? Um, I've I've been saying that we've gone to tournaments, World Cup and African Cups with better squads than this, and no, and no won it. Mm. So I don't want to base my arguments on. The kind of players we have in our stock we've gone to the tournament with some of the top players on in the world and still not won it mm -hmm. uh so 
we have to give the, the new boys, especially yeah. Samuel Ousu. This is the same way Kwesi appeared through in uh, Christian Achu. Yeah. On YouTube videos, he invited him. Yeah. He invited um, um, Mohamed Rabiu, he invited mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, Wakasu, and all these new players. Yeah. So I'm giving Kwesi Apia the benefit of the doubt that this time he, he has a lot of young players in the team, mm -hmm. players who are making their debut for the Black Stars yeah. at a major tournament. But uh, the most important thing is that the blend of the youth and experience is something that wins at the AFCON. Yeah. I don't know, but I would have wanted that two or three local players are sent to the AFCON, mm -hmm. especially Fatah is a few. Exactly. Because in the past five or six African Cup of Nations tournament, from when Egypt won it, mm -hmm. the, the records have already proven that there are players who, are, who know the African terrain. The European type of soccer is entirely different from what pertains here. That's why the likes of Goffrey Obobona, Sande Mba, Nathan Sinkala, uh, Rainford, Calaba, Cala, yeah. uh, Emmanuel Mayuka, yeah. these players are able to shine at the AFCON at the expense of the likes of Drogba. Yeah. So if you are going to the AFCON, somebody who's played in the African Confederations Cup, I mean, known the Patriots, and Putu. of course, Tresor <laughs> Putu, Mabi, these are play so if, if Kwesi Apia is going to the AFCON, he should be able to put one or two of these local players there with a the hunger, because these are players who want to move to Europe. So um, I, I think it's, it's, it's a very good squad. Yeah. We can make the best out of mm -hmm. the squad that we have. That's why we have. Yeah. There's no other player outside the, the Ghana squad mm -hmm. who can uh, say that they've taken something out of the squad and it will be very difficult for us to win it. Yeah. It's a very good squad. All what we need to do is organization. I say it's every Ghanaian player anywhere, given the opportunity to play for the Black Stars, will shine. So. The opportunity given to these players is an opportunity for them to create something for themselves. Yeah. Whoever is in the squad is capable of starting games and winning the tournament for God. We are not going to, the, to participate. We are going there to win. Okay. So from the first game to the last game of the AFCON, everybody in that team is a potential leader and a potential AFCON winner. Yeah, yeah I, I look at the squad and I, I wish we could go the Brazil way. Mm -hmm. You name your squad for the competition straight you go to camp yeah. with them and do whatever Peace. you want to do exactly i i'm not too happy with this style of I, naming, uh, naming charity i mean yeah provisional squad and then you prune it down to the number needed for the competition because, because Chris, he might probably have his 23 in his squad already yes I, I, was, his head already. I was reading is it uh, cameroon mm -hmm. uh Sidov has how many 34 or so mm -hmm. i mean how, how, how he how named 32 and the ministry added to yes. <laughs> yes, that is, that is, that that is what that is what I wanted to say. <laughs> it's a whole mess. Is that just, right? just hit your number yeah, and go. Yeah. Even though, like like it happened in France ninety eight, mm -hmm. uh, Brazil went with their twenty three mm -hmm. two weeks before the competition. Yeah. Romario also got yeah, injured. Exactly, and they, yeah. they they had to struggle to find a replacement. Maybe that's why they don't do this. But I would have wished that we went in there with uh, twenty three and then forget about the seven that has been added. But see, just like Sadik said. Mm -hmm. I heard Siki Akuno talking about the inclusion of uh, the two protocol players yeah. and even the house of a player, yeah. Yeah. Hassan, yeah. also. Yeah. And Siki made a point that Kwesi is proving that he's following the local game yeah. because in his view, these are some of the best mm -hmm. out of the special competition that we have yeah. been playing. Yeah. And so the coach is justified. But then if you watch or listen to what Siki said well, mm -hmm. he was a bit uh, not sure, mm -hmm. skeptical as to whether that these three mm -hmm. will make the final 23. Yeah, I mean, oh, and we, we all are. Yes, just like what Sadiq was saying. Mm -hmm. When in, in France 98, yeah. Cameroon went to the World Cup with uh, one player, I've forgotten the name. Yeah. Uh, recently, I was reading about him. He exactly. was a local player. Local yeah. player. Actually, from Division 2 or so. Yeah. Pierre Njanka. Yeah. Yeah. He went to the Pierre World Janka. Cup in France mm -hmm. and scored one of the best goals. I'm just saying that some of these boys who have not tasted football outside the local territory should be trusted yes because okay. they have the hunger to do it at the top level so others can see them yeah. and bring them to you yeah, exactly i would wish that mm -hmm. for the boys especially uh Fatal Fatal. and the uh, house of folk defender Mohamed Alassan. Mohamed Alassan. they will be part of the final 23. they will always and be used as cones yes they invite the local yeah. players but, but, and they're arranging cones <laughs> at training but, but it shouldn't happen yeah. look i i 
when we were displaying the squad, I was just looking at yeah. the numbers and trying to figure out who and who will be dropped. No, is he, is he, so, so, so let's just look at it this way. <laughs> um, between, I, I mean, we know that it's quite certain that Felix might make the yes, squad. Yes, because but, they are three <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but, he's, he's but, lucky. But if you look at if you look yeah, at Mohamed exactly. Alassane and, and Abdul Fatal, which one of these two, you know, has a better chance of going for the outcome? Well, I I will be biased and say that Fatal. You are not maybe, being biased. Maybe because I've not watched the Hasbro player. Yeah. I mean, let me admit. Exactly. But I've seen Fatal in a lot of games. Mm -hmm. And there's something particularly important about him. Yeah. How he's able to fight and, 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 and get the team going. Yeah. Look, the Kotoko team virtually depends on him. Exactly. When Yakuba was not there, mm -hmm. he, he was the one scoring. And especially so when we have a Black Stars team that has an attack that has more or less... <laughs> uh, strikers who have not been scoring as we would have wished. Exactly. If you have a player that can place the ball 20, 25 yards from the goalpost mm -hmm. and shoot it. and score, mm -hmm. look, such a player is not one that you have to downplay. Sadiq, I'm, I'm, I'm taking a short break. When, when we come back, you know, there's more to discuss. But if you're listening to us on radio, you're live on 3FM 92.7. Another guest is joining us, and then we'll talk more about, about this issue. I know we have just a little more time to end the show, but we'll be back shortly.